So, unfortunately, Dan stole my quote this morning. <laughs> I know. But, <laughs> so, since 1999, the curriculum focused very much on your Microsoft, your PowerPoints, um, and I remember going, well, even last year, every single one of our ICT lessons would be going into the computer suite and the children making PowerPoints. And that's where we still need to keep that, but we're moving away from that. Um, and now it's all about learning about using your computers and not using the computers and how we actually use them. There's a lot and lot of children out there now who are learning these skills and we need to prepare them for the future. And I think they say at the moment the ma majority of jobs that our children are going to be doing when they leave school don't exist. But we know that those jobs are going to be focusing on that computing and that programming. So how has the curriculum changed from ICT to computing? Well, first of all, obviously, the name's changed. Um, the needs to use IT right across the, the curriculum. So having those curriculum cross-curricular links and ensuring that all of maths, literacy, history feeds through that computing that we do. It's largely based on computing science. It's kind of gone full circle that it now looks back at that old control element of the curriculum. And there is a much, much bigger focus on e-safety as well um, that the children are need to understand and need to be using in their everyday. So I was also a bit worried, Dan, this morning. I had <laughs> stolen my thunder, but it was okay. So computing science, information technology and digital literacy are the key threads through uh, the new computing curriculum. So the computing science is all about the programming and the coding and those key words of using that sequence, that repetition. Um, the information technology is the kind of the day-to-day -day running of the curriculum, thinking very carefully about how the computers work and also feeding in about making sure that we're safe online as well. We've then got the digital literacy. That's the side of literacy that we all use every day in all of our, our daily teaching and what a lot of our IT curriculum used to focus on. Now, I'm a firm believer that actually what you've got as a curriculum and what we had at Fording Bridge with a curriculum still works. And that would be kind of our digital literacy side of that. I tell the staff at Fording Bridge that we should only be spending a third of our time on computing science. Um, and that would be your programming, your data logging, your control and your logo side of it. 10% should be then looking at how the computers work and also making sure that we're aware of our safety and how we are in using the wide, wide web. And then the rest of our time is used to then build in all of our different elements, so our art, our music packages, going back and still doing our multimedia and our data handling, and using as, as well as our digital photographing and using those bits and pieces as well. So at Fawning Bridge, we started by using it in that way. And when we started planning and doing our long-term plans last year, that's how we started to do it. We then have recently just changed it into a more friendly and child-friendly um, language. So we now have five elements. We have a programming element, which would be your computer science element. We have a data handling, which would be the, pr the presentation of that data, your spreadsheets, your data logging. We then have our multimedia, which will be your PowerPoints um, and your word processing and your art. We then have a big focus on our e-safety and then technologies in our lives. And that's talking about how actually um, the computers work. And the most important thing that we do is we think very carefully about how we can get our cross-curricular. Um, in school, we only have one hour in our ICT ICT suite each week for our children to go and use. We are very, very lucky that we do have a, um, a class set of iPads as well, which we can take into the classrooms. Um, and that's how we use our curriculum time to be able to get all of these skills in. And we use a lot of our, we do cross-curricular planning and a lot of our topic time is, thread th is a thread through our um, computing. So programming. At the top there, this is the brief that we gave, give the um, teachers at school, so how do you create and debug programs using that sequencing, that repetition and that selection. What are algorithms? And it's a lot about in our computing curriculum about problem solving and teaching the children that actually they are the best people to be able to do that problem solving themselves and that independent learning. We also, are, through that problem solving, developing resilience 
and also teaching the children about that logical thinking that Dan touched on this morning. The programs that we use to support that, we use Scratch. Um, I am a bit of a believer that there are a lot more things out there other than Scratch um, and that we've promoted a lot of our children love Scratch but we also are promoting the love of lots of other things. We've recently started using Flowal um, and I've got to say Flowal is probably the now one of the favourite um, programmes that we've used in school and we've got some fantastic um, results from that and a little bit later on I've got a chance for you to go and explore that if you would like to. We use Logo so we've gone back I suppose kind of to the olden days and I think Logo is absolutely brilliant for teaching that different um, programming language because in the curriculum it does talk about the fact that it should be a different language not just one. Um, for our year six children we use Lego Mindstorm and um, we actually hired them through Hampshire um, and it was an easier way for us to use them rather than buying in, uh, in the Lego Mindstorm um, which allowed the, ch the children to then have in year six have that challenge and have that extra uh, kind of knowledge of the programming language that the Lego Mindstorm used. Um, Lego Mindstorms are kind of little robots, so it linked very nicely into their robotic um, learning that they used this year. Uh, we've done simple online simulations, um, so just teaching them the kind of the forwards, the backwards, and that very simple <coughs> language to begin with. Beatbots and Roamers, we, we dug the Roamers out the back of the cupboard that have been there for 20 years and we used those and a lot of our maths <coughs> work coordinates and turns, they, we've used those as well. <coughs> because we've got the iPads, there are some free apps and we've downloaded Hopscotch, Cargobot and Codable, which we have found that really, really support the programming side of the curriculum. <coughs> Firm believer as well that actually about when we're thinking about programming that it's very important with the children to use the correct vocabulary. Um, an algorithm, all it is, is a set of instructions and even now in our literacy and the way that we've got that in is we talk about algorithms all of the time in, our, in, in the way that we um, discuss things with the children. We've done, I'm sure you've seen the jam sandwich example of teaching algorithms, but it could be just from tidying up and actually the children writing an algorithm of how they tidy their to pencil pots on the table um, and, and just the basic skills that they then can understand that it's a process of, of language. Quite often I hear children saying, not just in computing, oh, I need to debug that. And it's fantastic to hear them say that because obviously we've done our job that they understand what um, debugging means. And it just means to fix something. So the dating handling part of the curriculum, we use data logging. We've linked that to our science. So we've got a data logger. Um, we're about to, year four, about to start doing sound as our science topic and we are going to use the data logger to then record lots of the sounds around the school um, and then to put that through into maybe an Excel spreadsheet and use that and present that data. We've also done branching databases. FlexiTree is a very, very old. It's again when I was going through the uh, server cupboard and I found this floppy disk that had FlexiTree <laughs> on it. And it is brilliant. It's absolutely fantastic because it teaches the children again about how that flowchart and that branching database works. And we do with our upper school children as well use Excel to teach them that simple formulae and how we use that. So with our multimedia, very much we're, with our word processing, we link that into our literacy or anything else that we're doing with the children that involves presenting um, information to them. Uh, that word and publisher are, are really great tools to help with that. We've used a lot of art packages as well. We've used SketchUp, which is a free download. Um, the children have just done, in year five, they've done all about um, the Romans and they built their own little Roman village using SketchUp. We've used Sumo Paint and recently we've started using Paint.net as well, which again are just kind of an up from using the kind of the accessories paint that are on the computers. Again, they are all free downloads. Music, Compose World, that is another one that was on in the back of the server cupboard that the children absolutely love. It's very basic, it's great for Key Stage 1 children as well. And on the um, iPads we're using GarageBand as well to support the children. Digital photographs, we, we've um, recently gone on a trip to look at the old railway station around Fording Bridge and the children took a photograph of the old railway and then they superimposed bits and pieces back onto that using um, Sumo Paint and using the, um, the digital photographs that they'd taken on the site. 
Stop motion, we quite often use Windows Media um, Movie Maker sorry, for that and we've do recently done Titanic where the children made little plasticine um, boats and then they then took their stop motion pictures of it hitting the iceberg and sinking um, and then we had parents in to view those and I absolutely loved that. PowerPoint and Explain Everything, Explain Everything is probably my favourite app um, on the iPad. It is so versatile to use right across the curriculum. Okay, technologies in our life. We um, have done a little bit of work on what actually, how does our server work in school? Um, and showing the children, well, this is our server, and then we've got the switches that connect um, our computers, and then it all talks to each other. It can be as basic as teaching them how to save and log on to that computer and having their own management system and, and their own space to save um, their work. In recently, um, we had an Ofsted inspection and the big question they asked to the children is how do you log on? How do you have your own area in um, school where you can save your work and how do you manage that? And they were really keen to look at that. We look a lot about the reliability of research um, on the computer, so it's all good, but is everything up to date? How do we use that information to know that it's up to date? And also, how reliable do we know that is? We've also, to introduce them to how technology works, looked at a supermarket and how the supermarket knows that they need more stock on the shelf and how that stock gets to them, and, and talking them through that journey as well, and then doing these cartoon strips to show that. And we do have a blog. Um, not used completely to kind of how we would like it to be used at the moment. That's the next step that we would like to use that every class is blogging all of the time. E-safety is a massive, massive, massive part of the new curriculum. Um, we currently do termly assemblies with the children. We found with e-safety with e that it's got to be that hard hitting and as hard hitting as possible for them to really get the message. Um, we've shown them some quite controversial videos um, and clips and told them some, some kind of, I suppose, scary type stories. And that's where we found the most impact has been. We do obviously have our school contract and our rules. We use the smart rules in school to support them thinking about that. Um, we've run a class competition as well to the which class could design the best way to promote e-safety um, to our infant school and some came up with little videos, um, some came up with poster type things that they used. We have used our PCSO um, as well to come in and talk to the children, um, to talk to them about how serious and how they can promote that and that really worked very well. And also, um, we, we feel that getting parents involved as well, that's where a lot of the problems with our e-safety kind of stem from at home and what they're allowed to access at home. So getting the parents, and we were really shocked at the little knowledge that parents had of what their children were doing at home and the e-safety parts of that. Okay, so when we started looking last year at planning our curriculum, and um, this shows the year four, and what we did was obviously we put all of the parts of the curriculum that I've just spoken about down the side there. Um, and then we mapped out what topics and what units we were about to do. So for example, in year four, the Romans, or we've just done the railways. Um, and then we thought about how we could get those cross-curricular links in. I do have a copy of this, so if it's not quite easy to see, you're very welcome to take one. Um, and making sure that we'd, we'd given the children um, exposure to all of those skills across the year. Okay, so how do we teach computing at Fording Bridge? We do a lot of the children doing their own problem solving, so providing them with a scenario or with a problem, and first of all, just letting them go away and having a go at that. Um, getting stuck and learning those strategies of being resilient. We have um, some learning dimensions, and one of those is Toby the tortoise, who's in charge of resilience. And quite often we hear, oh, I'm using Toby, because we, and we talk a lot about using Toby in our computing lessons to overcome those challenges that they're experiencing. It should be child-led, um, and so that we quite often say to the children, right, You've done that skill, you've learned the basics of Scratch. What could you now do? What would you like to do um, to support your learning and move your learning on? We do a lot of pupil to pupil learning. There's, I know, a lot of the staff, when I started introducing computing this time last year, were completely, oh my goodness, I can't teach this at all. Um, and so I said to them, well, actually, a lot of your children in your class have got some fantastic knowledge. Use those as teachers. 
um, and so there is nothing wrong with a child getting stuck, a child knowing what to do and then them teaching it. We, we've trained our children up as well that they now don't do it for the other person, they actually provide them with the instructions and the support to be able to do it themselves. And as I've said earlier, I think it's completely about using the correct vocabulary. So using the algorithms, using debug, and once they've got that vocabulary in place, that, that's what the computing curriculum is looking for. Making sure that they're active, um, that they're, they're actually doing something. And actually, I don't think there is anything wrong with doing lots of off-screen lessons. So before we introduce um, Flow All, um, it looks at flow charts and we actually went outside, we played um, some playground games using a flow chart. The children came back, invented their own game and then they came up with their own flow charts for that so that they were really, really aware of how that worked. And I, as I said to my staff who were telling me, well actually we don't know how to teach this, it's all about asking the right questions. Well, why is that not working? How could you debug that? What could you do next? Where could you find some help to do that? And all those probing questions are going to progress the computing thinking on. Okay, this is quite often the way that we teach computing. So this is an example from Flowell, that we give the children the learning objective or the learning intention at the top. Um, and then there is a challenge. So this one obviously says, can they make a zebra crossing light flash correctly? then give them kind of a progression of skills that they have to work through to be able to then get that zebra crossing light correctly. Once they've achieved that, it's kind of the unlock the challenge, um, which is going to be using the skills that they've learnt in those first parts to apply that to a different context. On the back, we um, have some help cards as well. Um, so that the children then can think, oh, actually, I've given it a go for five minutes myself. I'm still really stuck. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to be an independent learner in doing that. Um, what our learners say about computing? Well, I run a computing club after school and every week they come to me and say, oh, we're going to do programming. And every week, obviously, we are. They absolutely love the fact that we're doing programming. They as I said before, they, they are using their resilience. And there is, n there is no getting away from the fact that if you put a child in front of any IT, they are going to be more motivated um, and feel that they can achieve lots more on the computers. OK, so round the room, I've set up some little spaces. We've probably only got five minutes, but you're welcome to come back at any point today and have a little fiddle. So over here on the floor, I've made some little steps. Um, for you to have a little look. I'm just going to flick through this one. Because well, quite often what we've done is we've started with hu um, human robots to look very carefully at the language that the children are going to need to use to be able to then apply that to the computer. So they, we get them to walk around there, they jot down the language that they've used and then they go and put that on the computer so they've experienced that first of all. Um, and over, I can't remember, I think it's that one over there, is um, there's a little card with the activities on for logo and on the back there's a little help card as well. So for logo we would have the computing language and then the, obviously the, the instructions there if they're getting really stuck. Quite often I do put them in envelopes as well so the children then can come up and get them if they would like to. Um, Flowall is um, over on this one over here. So there is, again, on the front, there is this, the same one as I um, showed you. And as I said, we would start off the computer with playground games, looking and exploring flow charts that then allow the children then to apply that to the computer program. Um, Scratch, can you make a sprite dancer? So right at the back over there, there is the um, sprite dancing one again with the instructions on the front and the help card on the back. And then it was only at the beginning of the week, one of the children from my computing club came and said to me, oh, Miss Dickinson, I've made a game. So I've actually put his game up over on there um, for you to have a little look at. It was completely something that he did at home and he's very happy for you to have a little look. Um, and then can, I might then say to the children, well, can you create something similar where you've got your cat and your mouse or you had um, something else that had to catch something um, look inside what Matthew did and can you come up with a more effective way to, to write that programming. I've also got three iPads um, that I will hand around. On the iPads you'll find that there's the Beatbot app, the Hopscotch app and the Cargobot and the Codable app where you can just have a little play. Um, 
I've only just started and I've only just found Cargo Bot, but last night I was having a fiddle with just the tutorial bit and it looks like something that we are definitely going to be able to start using um, as a pro another programming tool within our curriculum. So that's all from me. Go, feel free to go and fiddle with...